Weather. No chance of rain. Few clouds. Visibility. It's a Gobi Desert. How about helicopters and recovery team? Already days ago and have conducted multiple joint rehearsals. Their core mission is to arrive the moment the Shenzhou 13 crew touches down. Checked, 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 and checked. All good. What up guys, this is Chen Chen from Beijing. Yesterday, the Shenzhou 13 crew of Zhai Zhigang, Wang Yaping, and Ye Guangfu completed their six-month mission aboard China space station and returned to Earth successfully aboard the Shenzhou spacecraft. Now I'm gonna break down the story of the hero's journey home from orbit. About six hours prior to undocking, the Beijing Aerospace Control Center made a decision based on a series of conditions, including the status of the landing site and, most importantly, make sure that the designated landing site passes over the space station's orbital plane. By this time, the astronauts have already closed the hatches between the station and the spacecraft, make sure that they are perfectly sealed, and then suit it up and strapped in and wait for the undocking command. As the Shenzhou 13 undocks from China's space station, their journey home begins. First, a few small thruster bursts help the spacecraft separate from the station, which also lowers the orbit a tiny bit. And then it goes into free flight for a while as the inertia created by the burns pushes it backwards until it comes to a point far enough from the station to separate its orbital module. Up until this point, if and only if there's anything that goes wrong on the ground or one of the astronauts doesn't feel well, there's really no way back other than taking rendezvous around the Earth for at least 24 hours to wait for the next window period for landing. But if anything happened before the orbital separation, they can always catch up with the station and go back. I'm glad that none of that happened, and generally, people don't go back once it's deployed. So now the Shenzhou 13 is left with the re-entry capsule and the propulsion module to conduct several rendezvous before it arrives at a point near South Africa. This is when the propulsion module is jettisoned after it applies a break to push the return capsule to the re-entry trajectory. After the service module separation, the return capsule makes some small thrusts to adjust its altitude and position to an angle that is best for re-entry and make sure that the heat shield is facing the Earth. Once the deorbit burn is completed, the Shenzhou 13 return module is on course for landing. And now it comes to the most exciting and most dangerous part. As the vehicle streaks through the atmosphere, it's almost in free fall, generating a plasma that can heat 2,000 degrees Celsius. You'd be burned into ashes in a snap. But don't worry. First, the heat shield is designed to be ablated, a process that absorbs much of the thermal energy. So the capsule keeps them cool, and the astronauts are equipped with second layers of protection. Their spacesuits keep them pressurized so that they can enjoy the spectacular view of the burning plasma. Well, I can't say for sure if it's an enjoyable ride, but I'm sure the view is unparalleled. Although most of the landing operations have been automated and preset, there will be a communication blackout between the ground and the spacecraft for up to four minutes due to the plasma. And that's not it. The crew will experience peak G forces of three to four Gs for a long period of time. That is way longer than what you experience on a roller coaster, and you have to keep a clear head to react to any sort of emergency. Going through the atmosphere sounds scary, but the vehicle is slowed down significantly compared to its orbital velocity. It's now traveling at 330 meters per second, and telecommunications have been restored. Well, of course, the ground team did not stop observing or tracking with radar and telescopes during the course of communication blackouts. Now the return capsule deploys a pilot parachute that pulls out the joke chute for deceleration, which slows down the capsule to around 180 meters per second. After working for about 15 seconds, the joke chute is cut and the main chute is deployed. And then after the main chute is fully opened, the capsule is down at 8 to 10 meters per second. That's the equivalent of 30 kilometers per hour. Sounds pretty slow, right? But 
and a vertical touchdown. That speed is still fast enough to break your spine. Therefore, a final burn from the bottom of the capsule is lit at 1 meter above the ground. That slows it down to 2 meters per second. At the same time, the pilot seats, which are designed for impact attenuation, are lifted to further transfer the impact load from the touchdown. And finally, here comes the soft touchdown. Welcome home, space heroes. This time, the whole journey took less than nine hours from undocking to touchdown thanks to the fast return technique, which greatly reduced the number of rendezvous and the hours inside that seven cubic meter spaceship. Apart from the re-entry technique update, the landing site is also quite interesting considering its history and the diverse terrain of that area. Now, if you're interested, please check out the articles linked below to learn more about the departure, landing, and recovery. And of course, let us know for any other questions that you want to ask about China's space project. This is Chen Chen from Beijing. Till next time.